If you've been online and sentient for the past decade or so, you have likely stumbled across the gender wars, and unfortunately, my dear, you are definitely worse off for it. No offense. But around April of this year, a new movement entered the villa. The 4B movement sprang up across TikTok, and its origins go back several years in South Korea and China. Ladies across the globe are putting their foot down and saying, actually, I'd rather be alone forever than have my life destroyed by a man. And over in South Korea and China, women are shaving their heads and refusing to engage with men at all. But before we judge, let's get curious. What is the 4B movement? And what does it say about our society's trajectory that gender separatist movements are on the rise? Post-election Maggie here, I must have a freaking crystal ball because Donald Trump won the election and immediately my timeline, and I'm sure yours, was flooded with women in America declaring that it's time to officially bring 4B to the states. So if you're here because of that, welcome. This was filmed prior to the election, but everything I say in this video still stands. I'd just be remiss if I didn't mention how rapidly this movement has grown as we have been editing this video. So here's a few TikToks from the past week or so. is a radical feminist subsect that originated online in South Korea around 2019. 4B stands for for by. By means no in Korean. And the four no-nos, if you'd like to participate, are marrying men, having children with them, dating them, or engaging in intimate relations with them. And because things can always get more extreme, we now have 6B with two more rules. Women can't spend money on lashes, fashion, or any of those patriarchal products that appeal to the male gaze and should always be supportive of other single women participating in the movement, which they call B for B. And some even choose to engage in a secret seventh rule, not talking to men at all. Teu means, means by responding. So not responding to the man, not responding to the incels. The man will always try to convince you to stop the 4B movement. And also, if you talk with the man, that makes men to live longer. There are a study that men live longer if women talk with them and the man who will talk with women a longer time. So that is reason why we have to stop with the stop talking with the men. Yes, you heard that correctly. But wait, there's more. The final boss, 6B4T. We already know the 6Bs, but those have more to do with interactions with men. The 4T is about rejecting misogyny and culture. They call it the modern corset. And for South Korean women, this cultural misogyny comes in the forms of hypersexualization in otaku culture. You can think anime, video games, you get it. As well as the beauty standards in the K-beauty industry and the idol worship in K-pop. But the 4T also rejects religion, which it's kind of ironic because it's giving restrictive belief system. It also reminds me heavily of the MGTOW movement in America, which if you're unfamiliar, stands for men going their own way. Both movements advocate for their respective genders to cut themselves off from the treacherous and parasitic opposite sex. They say nothing to be gained in marriage, and they believe the good ones are almost mythical. MGTOW even calls them unicorns. And it's very obvious to onlookers like you and I that both movements are made up of hurt people searching for easy answers. But how did they take such a hold on the population? For women in the 6B4 team movement, rejecting men is a way to focus on their larger goals. They see this as the only way to gain autonomy and control over their lives. And I think to understand this, 
we need to zoom in because often individual stories reflect a larger pattern. Take Young Me, for example. So The Cut wrote an article about the 4B movement featuring the story of Young Me. She grew up with a father whose abuse chased away her mother and made her sister lose her hair from stress at only eight years old. And Young Me was five watching all of this go down. As she grew up, she found herself desperate to please men with her appearance, spending a bunch of money on makeup and clothes. But when she found feminism online, a lot of things started to click for her. Young Me saw videos of women shaving their heads in protests of beauty standards. And after thinking about it for a bit, she realized men don't feel this burden, just women. So she went ahead and shaved her head too. By the way, short haircuts and shaved heads are a way 4B women recognize each other in public. 4B helped Young Me understand that the abuse her father inflicted wasn't her fault. And for those who have been hurt by someone who is supposed to love them unconditionally, being able to externalize that finally after years of blaming yourself is so healing and powerful. But what 4B does is paint a rather nasty picture of men as a whole, putting them in this box where they're all potentially dangerous. And therefore, the best act of self-preservation is to simply avoid. And many other women likely came to the movement with similar stories. The same goes for MGTOW. Men attracted to male separatism often have these horror stories of being totally screwed in divorce courts and losing their money and their children. 6B4T did not come out of nowhere. Only a year before it started popping up online, the Me Too movement swept through South Korea and China. In 2017, the New York Times published the now infamous takedown of Harvey Weinstein, sparking the Me Too movement in the US. The very next year, it came to East Asia, both in South Korea with the arrest of a senior prosecutor for sexual assault, and in China when a VP of a prominent university was removed from his position for sexual harassment. The growing feminist movements in South Korea and China led to a backlash similar to what we've experienced in the US. In South Korea, the group Man on Solidarity has fought back. Their leader has said, we don't hate women and we don't oppose elevating their rights, but feminists are a social evil. One South Korean researcher claimed men in their 20s are deeply unhappy, considering themselves victims of reverse discrimination, angry that they had to pay the price for gender discriminations created under the earlier generations. And the South Korean leader, Yoon suk yeol even used this as a campaign issue, accusing feminists of being responsible for the low birth rates in Korea. Does this all sound familiar? Yun's opponent believes the real issue is an economic one. He likens South Koreans to chicks falling off a crowded nest. But how can the nest be crowded when South Korea's population is shrinking rapidly? South Korea's birth rate is the lowest in the world and falling at 0.72. The replacement rate by comparison is 2.1, and many of our most prosperous countries are in the same boat. We have shrinking populations, men and women are clearly not getting along, at least online, and resentment is rising in every direction. So what do we do? I believe we need to embrace a more realistic and positive worldview over a negative collectivist one. Are some human beings nasty and cruel and hurtful? Of course. But it's unfair to claim that every person of the opposite sex is the same. Some people blame individualism for our increasing atomization, but with movements like MGTOW and 6B4T, it's pretty clear to me that collectivism is responsible not only for the gender war we're experiencing, but the loneliness we feel as a result. When we paint men with this broad brush, we lose the incredible individuals that make up men as a group. And we lose out on what they can teach us. Going full isolationist in order to protect ourselves means we miss out on so much growth that comes from interacting and collaborating with others. Even if you zoom it out, societies of people benefit so much from interacting with one another. Sometimes there's a little war here or there or some nasty interactions, but we still choose to trade and make treaties and talk to one another for a reason. We are simply better together. 
And if we want to overcome the gender wars, it's high time we start viewing one another as the unique, complex individuals that we are and embrace what makes us different. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button, subscribing, and leaving a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts on the gender wars and what you think is the solution. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.